revenge or repeat. Revenge or repeat. That's the headline in the promotions of this upcoming fight on Sunday, October 16th, live on ESPN Plus pay-per-view. The showdown, the rematch between Devin the Dream Haney and George Cambosis Jr. Now, this fight is only a rematch because back in June of 2022, both of these world champions came together and they fought for the winner to become the undisputed lightweight champion of the world, in which Devin Haney gave George Cambosis Jr. more than he bargained for by going all the way to Australia, the hometown of George Cambosis Jr., in enemy's territory, in the lion's den, for less money, and he made history. And because he's made history, now he is the undisputed lightweight champion of the world. So the reason why the promotion headline is asking the question of revenge or repeat because either this fight will be George Cambosis's revenge or it will be Devin Haney's repeat of his win. Devin Haney is five feet, nine inches tall. He has a 71 inch reach. He's 23 years old. His record stands as 28 and 0 with 15 of those 28 wins coming by way of knockout. He is undefeated. He's representing Las Vegas, Nevada. And as I just mentioned a few moments ago, he is the undefeated, undisputed WBA, WBC, IBF, WBO, and the ring lightweight champion of the world. His opponent, George Cambosis Jr. He stands at five feet, eight and a half inches tall with a 68 inch reach. He's 29 years old. His record stands at 20 wins, one loss, and 10 of those 20 wins have come by way of knockout. He is representing his hometown of Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. And he is, as I mentioned a few moments ago, the former WBA, IBF, WBO, and the ring lightweight champion of the world. And so this fight could be round 13 or round one. What do I mean by that? Well, this fight could be round 13 for Devin Haney continuing where he left off in round 12 in their previous fight. Or this could be round one of a trilogy that might, might be afforded to George Cambosis Jr. if he's able to win this fight and make this fight even in the win and loss column. And so the destiny of both of these fighters hinge on this fight on October 16th. Now, who will win? What does Devin Handy have to do to win this fight? Very simple. 
Devin have De excuse me, Devin Haney has to keep that same energy. Yep. That's the saying, right? Keep that same energy. Well, Devin Haney, he has to keep that same energy that he had in the first fight. He has to keep countering every time George Cambosis Jr. lets his hands go to be more desperate in punching and landing punches and being aggressive. All Devin Haney has to do is use that against Cambosis by continuously countering him. Step into the side, counter, step to the side and make this a technical fight like he did in the first fight. Jab, body attack, combinations, get in, get out, elusive defense and ring generalship. These are the things that Devin Haney already displayed in the first flight. In the first fight, and remember what I just told you guys earlier and girls earlier, that Devin Haney went into Australia in the first fight. He traveled from America all the way to Australia to compete in this fight. He went to the lion's den. He rattled the pit bull's cage. He stepped on enemy's territory with one title that he had, but he walked out of enemy's territory. He walked out of the pit bull's cage. He walked out of the lion's den with four additional world championship belts. And so those are the things that he's gonna to have to do to walk right back out of the lion's den again, to walk out of enemy's territory again to walk out of the pit bull cage again and maintain all of those titles. Now, what Cambosis need to do to win this fight? He needs to let his hands fly. And I know that he obviously is at a disadvantage if he continues to throw punches because Devin Haney's advantage is him being a great counterpuncher. But he cannot concern himself with that too much. Because if he overthinks that, he will become gun shy, reluctant to throw punches like he did in the first fight. And so he's going to have to have a more effective output in the punch column and let his hands fly. Another thing that Cambosis needs to do to win this fight, he needs to test Devin Haney's chin. Now, it don't happen too often, and it didn't happen often enough, but it did happen at least one time where Devin Haney took a big shot in one of his previous opponents' fights, and guess what happened? He wobbled in the later round. I think it was in the 11th or the 12th round, I believe. He wobbled a little bit, but he finished strong. He recovered very quickly from that big shot that he took, and he recovered. Well, George Cambosis is going to have to test Devin Haney's chin and land punches, not just to the body, but he also has to strategically land punches to Haney's chin so that if Haney responds like he did the first time he got rocked, and wobble, George Cambosis can finish strong because he is a good finisher, especially when he have his fighters hurt like he did against his previous opponent in Teofimo Lopez. Another thing that he, uh, Cambosis needs to do to win, he needs to use familiarity as an advantage to be more effective in game planning and strategy. And the reason why I say use that familiarity is because he fought Devin Haney before. He took Devin Haney's best punch. He 
got outboxed by Devin Haney. He knows what to expect in the second fight because now he can say he knows Devin Haney because he's already been in the ring with him. So use all of those experiences that you already know about Devin Haney to gain an advantage. Everybody knows this. This is no secret. Cambosis is going to have to turn this fight into a war to disrupt the timing and elusive traits of Devin Haney. He's going to have to push Devin Haney to the ropes, the corner, bang him to the body, rough him up a little bit, legally now, not illegal legal punches, rabbit punches behind the head or low blows or anything of that nature, but legally turn this fight into a war. Legitimately turn this fight into a war. He's going to have to use the crowd as the motivation that's associated with a hometown advantage because basically 98% <laughs> of people that's going to be there in the crowd is going to be cheering for the hometown hero, Cambosis. So Cambosis needs to use all of those elements of crowd participation as motivate as motivation uh, to will him. Sometimes it takes an extra pat on the back. Sometimes it takes a fighter an extra clap or hearing applause or even hearing boos when the fighter's not looking good or doing good to motivate them to press on, overcome, dig down deep to win the fight. And George Cambosis Jr. is going to have to dig down deep. And we've seen him dig down deep against Lopez, which is how he became uh, the unified champion of the world in this division. He's going to have to memorize some of those strategies that he used against Lopez and try to implement some of those strategies against the dream Devin Haney this is going to be a good fight while it lasts and it not necessarily means that this fight is going to go before 12 rounds we don't know but this is why this fight is a good fight because usually when people come back from rematches history has proven time and time again in this sport of boxing that some people do make adjustments. And in a rematch, they look better as a fighter than they did in the first fight based on those adjustments. And then they come out victorious. So we shall see on, Saturday, on Sunday, October the 16th, revenge or repeat.